All right, this is Grade 1, Module 1, Lesson 8. And in this lesson, we're continuing to use number bonds to represent number pairs. But this time, we're representing number pairs that have a sum of 10. And the idea, remember, parents and teachers, is, is that we're just letting students play with numbers, have fun with numbers, and in an engaging way, let them continue to practice that count on method where they use one of the hidden numbers and then count on from there. In this case, they're always going to be counting up to 10. Now, a couple of examples of things to think about before you actually kick into the actual lesson. Uh, one would be, in Eureka Math, they, um, for the, the problem set, for the in-class activity, students are using Rec and Rec bracelets. If you, as a teacher, just cannot stand the thought of using Rec and Rec bracelets, you don't want to make them, you don't want to buy them, you just don't want to deal with it, Another activity might be this, and I just kind of made this up. And the story goes, let's say you have two trees. You have an oak tree and a pine tree, and there are 10 crows. There's always going to be 10 crows, and those 10 crows land in these two trees. Uh, let's see, this one goes here, 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 and this one goes here, 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 here here and here. Okay, so there's one possibility. So we have 10 crows in these two trees. Now let's record our result. And one way to record our result is to say we have 6 plus 4 equals 10. As in, we have 6 crows in the oak tree, four crows in the pine tree for a total of 10. And let's just verify. We're going to punch the air with 6, and then we count on 7, 8, 9, 10. Sure enough, we have our 10 crows. And then, of course, the idea is let's have students continually uh, move the crows around so that they can find all of the possibilities of how these 10 crows could land in these two trees. In fact, I just made one. And it looks like I made 2 plus 8 equals 10. And one, it just parents, teachers, let your kids just play with the crows and let them sort these crows. And initially, it's going to kind of look random. And they're not going to be, uh, your students are not going to be very systematic about how they find all the equations. That is perfectly fine. Ultimately, you might want to show them a really cool pattern that might uh, show up here in our list. If you sort our first number from lowest to highest, you'll see a nice beautiful little pattern. That's just an idea. Another idea uh, I found at k5mathteachingresources.com. Give them a shout out. Woohoo! And uh, in this case, if you don't want to use Rec and Rex, maybe you want to use Cuisinair rods. And ultimately, basically what this is saying is um, if you want to use, right here, only two rods, that's the key thing, two rods record all the different ways that you can make 10. And they've given you one example right here where you have a green and a purple make 10, or in this case, it's a six and a four. Uh, teachers, by the way, before you go using Cuisinair rods, you know, especially with our first graders, um, heck, I always did it with my eighth graders, which is uh, make sure you give students plenty of play time with their Cuisinair rods so that they can get their wiggles out and their play time out of the way so that they can then, students can then focus on using those Cuisinair rods as math tools, not math toys. All right. Now, the actual lesson, if we were going to do the actual lesson, um, this says Rex found 10 bones on his walk. Uh, he can't decide which part he wants to bring to his doghouse and which part he should bury. Help Rex, uh, help show Rex his choices by filling in the missing parts of the number bonds. So the idea, teachers, would be you've got an example here. Some of these are 
burying, and some are doghouse, right? So you might want to put in, and let's see if I can zoom in. You, so you might want to put in bury, and then house, doghouse. All right, and that might help the students remember that the, in this case, I just arbitrarily chose the first number to represent burying and the second number to represent house. So as you fill it in, five and five, here you've got six. Now this is a perfect example of an opportunity for the students to look at the six and then with their fist kind of punch the air with six, six, and then count on seven, eight, nine, ten. And since I'm holding four fingers by the time I count up to ten, I know that my missing number is a four. And similarly, I might on this next one, seven, I'm going to punch the air with seven and then use my fingers to count up eight, nine, ten. And because I am holding on to the three, I've got three fingers count, uh, holding up by the time I reach 10, I know my missing number is a three. And then I'm, my missing number is a two, and my missing number is a one. Now, Rex decided to bury three and bring back seven into his house. So write all the adding sentences that match this number bond. So we've got this beautiful little number bond here. We have seven bo uh, bones total. Three of them he buried. Seven of, them, seven of them he is bringing to his house. So what are all the equations? Well, three plus seven equals ten. Seven plus three equals ten. Now in this case, we don't want students to be using two and eight or five and five because they're specifically saying let's match this number bond. But if you have those crazy little students who are just out of the box thinkers and they want to use different numbers, go ahead and let them change their number bond and then they can go ahead and make their corresponding four equations. In fact, that might be a way to differentiate your, your higher achievers. Give, let them choose a number bond and then create their four equations. And then we're going to continue, and notice now the, like the answer, or in this case the sum, is on the left side of the equation. So our equation would look like 10 equals 3 plus 7, and 10 equals 7 plus 3. And that wraps up Grade 1, Module 1, Lesson 8, continuing with our counting and count on method using number bonds, in this case, to represent the number 10.